Much of the American West is public land and nominally protected, but maps of the human footprint from the U.S. Geological Survey illustrate that our imprint on the region is already deep and indelible. Almost half of the West is owned by the federal government, and therefore somewhat immune from development pressures. The black on this map shows urbanized areas. You can see that there are far more big cities back east, but the West certainly has its share, especially along and near the Pacific coast. But the biggest player is clearly the federal government. Within that green, there are many different agencies in charge of how the land is managed, and each has its own mission and mandate. Traditional industries such as logging, mining, and ranching are allowed in many areas, but prohibited in many wilderness areas, parks, and other preserves. But something like a housing development, shopping mall, or farm isn't allowed on federal land. One of the most striking features of the West is that a relatively large portion of the region enjoys some form of protected status. Most of the West ecoregions, areas that are like ecological neighborhoods, have at least 20% of their area protected, reflecting the predominance of public lands in these inland arid areas. This map shows the results of an analysis of the human footprint in the West that accounts for a variety of stressors. White indicates areas with the least human impact, followed by green for places where the footprint is minimal, while orange and red areas are where people have done the most to transform native ecosystems. The most heavily impacted areas tend to be near cities, with places like Southern California, the Bay Area, Puget Sound, and the Colorado Front Range showing up clearly. Agriculture is the other big driver here. The Central Valley of California, the Willamette Valley of Oregon, and parts of Southeast Washington and Southern Idaho stand out in this regard. Many of the white and deep green areas on the map are already protected as wilderness areas, usually in national forests or national parks, but sometimes on land managed by the BLM and Fish and Wildlife Service. Blue indicates the location of wilderness areas in places such as the Sierra Nevada, Mojave Desert, Northern Cascades, and Northern Rockies. Here are where national parks and monuments are located. Major parks such as Yellowstone, Glacier, Death Valley, Yosemite, Grand Canyon, Canyonlands, and Olympic are clearly visible. And here are so-called wilderness study areas, which the BLM is currently managing as wilderness, but which are not protected by an act of Congress. You can see that these wilderness areas, parks, monuments, and WSAs cover many of the white areas, but certainly not all of them. Most of the other areas that are white or deep green on these maps are public lands, but they are not receiving the special protections afforded to wilderness and parks. Let's take a closer look at some of the factors used to calculate the human footprint. Planners now talk about the age of megacities in the West, and you can see them on this map. The vast majority of the region's population lives in and around a dozen or so cities. San Diego, Los Angeles, the Bay Area, Portland, and Seattle on the Pacific Coast have some of the biggest cities. But inland, there's Las Vegas, the Phoenix-Tucson Corridor, Santa Fe and Albuquerque, Salt Lake City and Utah's Wasatch Front, and the string of cities along the Colorado Front Range, from Fort Collins to Boulder to Denver to Colorado Springs. It's actually farming that has the greatest imprint on the West in terms of acres affected. Vast areas without many people have been transformed by agriculture, usually with the aid of irrigation. Even areas that aren't cities, suburbs, or farms have been impacted by the far-reaching network of highways and roads that crisscross the West. It's worth noting that this map just shows major highways. The vast network of secondary and dirt roads also contributes to habitat fragmentation. The authors of this analysis also looked at other networks, such as rail lines, which may be fenced and create obstacles for wildlife. Power lines, which often require roads underneath, also provide places for avian predators to perch. Canals, which can also fragment habitat. And even things like landfills, which can attract ravens, rats, and other species that imperil native wildlife. Another human impact are wildfires caused by people. As you can see, there have been thousands and thousands of these fires, some of which have grown to hundreds of thousands of acres. 
This map takes all of the points shown in the previous slide and shows where the density of human-caused fires is greatest. Places with relatively few residents, such as the Sierra Nevada, the Cascade Mountains, and the Milky Way Rim of Arizona, have seen plenty of human-caused wildfires. Even very remote places may bear the marks of human activity. Oil and gas drilling, plus the associated network of roads, pipelines, and other infrastructure, have made a significant impact on very unpopulated parts of Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, and New Mexico. This map, however, does not account for more recent oil and gas drilling in other parts of the West. One final category of human cost stressors to discuss, invasive species. This map shows the risk of invasion by exotic plants and is based on factors such as roads, which are conducive to spreading these alien invaders. This analysis also looked at non-native animals, namely feral cats and feral dogs, both of which tend to be found near where people live. Add it all up and you've got this portrait of the human footprint in the American West. As with so many other dimensions, elevation, rainfall, temperature, the West is a study in contrast and diversity. If you love spending time in the wilderness, the white and deep green pixels offer a sort of bucket list for backcountry trips. I've annotated some on this map. You can download more slides and other resources at ecowest.org.